I said, praise the Lord. There's a stirring in my spirit tonight. Um, I really believe that upon the Lord's table tonight, there are going to be impartations. I really believe that. And my, the thought of the Holy Ghost in my heart tonight is very simple. The Lord is your strength. The Lord is your strength. I said, the Lord is your strength. I'll say one more time, the Lord is your strength. Something is going to come upon your life tonight. As you partake of the broken body and shed blood of the Lord, I believe there are going to be impartations to your spirit, to your mind, to your body. To everything that has to do with your life. Amen? Um, life will not overcome you. You are an overcomer by nature. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Are you born of God? If you're saved, you're born of God. That's 1 John 5, 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. Who we see that overcoming the world? Forget the, the it, it looks like he's using gender sensitive words, but actually that he is actually talking about a person, male or female. Who is that one that overcoming the world, but the one that believeth that Jesus is the son of God? So at the end of the day, the things that help us overcome in this world are still things that have come to us as a result of our connection to Jesus Christ. Are you here somebody? So tonight something's gonna, I really believe, something's gonna happen to somebody tonight. God's going to infuse something into your life tonight. You're going to rise above the place and places that you are. Hallelujah. And uh, the things that seem like they're going to defeat you, they will not defeat you. Where you need wisdom, God will give you wisdom. Where you need help, God will give you help. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's look at Psalm 18, please. The Lord is my strength. Oh, my, my, my. I'll read Psalm 18. Maybe if we can get to it, I'll read also Psalm 144. But let me, maybe I'll start from Psalm 144 because I'll make more comment on Psalm 18. So can we just please go thank you to Psalm 144 verse 1. How many of you know that these statements in scripture are not just penned down to excite you? They're supposed to become a living reality in your life. Blessed, empowered to prosper. Be the Lord my strength. This is David talking. Which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Blessed be the Lord my strength. No, no. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. How many of you understand that one of the predominant anointings on David was an anointing for war or battle? Remember that almost cost him, that literally cost him the building of the temple. He had to pass that legacy down to his son. The Lord told him through the prophet that your hands have shed too much blood. And so your son Solomon will do that building of the temple. He gathered the material Solomon built. But there was an anointing on David. Praise the name of the Lord. It was an anointing for war and for battle. David was famous for many things. But one of the things he was most famous for were winning battles. Are you here somebody? So as a believer, life guarantee is not that, God's guarantee is not that battles won't come against you. But the guarantee is that you win. Say, the Lord is my strength. Say, I will not be afraid of whatever comes against me. Say, I will not be afraid of anything that comes against me. Say, the Lord is my strength. Say, the blessed God has blessed me. Say, he is my strength. Now, David said, he teacheth my hands to war, my fingers to battle. Because, you know, of course, they were using physical, they were using swords and they were using spears, javelins, all those kind of things, bows, arrows, things like that. But it can be figurative. Are you here, somebody? You don't necessarily have to take up a club or an AK-47. But there are skills needed in the battles of life. The, the two most important things needed, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24, the Bible said for us in the New Testament, that Christ has been made unto us what? Wisdom. And he has been made unto us what? Power. So when he teaches our hands to war, that means there is nothing, there is, there is no situation in your life that will ever come upon you that, that the anointing of God's spirit will not give you the necessary skills to overcome it. The wisdom of God, the power of God is yours. He said, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Praise the Lord. Now look at verse 2. Now look at this. My goodness. This is not, this is not an, ex, an English exclamation. Oh my goodness. No, no, no. My goodness. God is my goodness. 
He's the one that's good to me all the time. And my fortress, the high place, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. This one was not talking about David dominating human beings. Are you here, somebody? But he's simply saying that in the realm that God has put him, are you here, somebody? Um, in the realm that God has put him, he always comes out on top. Well, the thing about the, the truth of the matter is that um, there are human beings everywhere. You're one of them whom human beings too. Isn't that right? The world is full of human beings because you are there. But he said, who, who subdueth my people under me? Now, let's look at Psalm 18. Thank you, Lord. Say with me again, the Lord is my strength. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 18, verse 1. A lot of David's great revelations... He was not the writer of all the Psalms. Some people think he was, no, but he was the writer of most of them. And a lot of David's revelations came out of the intensity of his challenges. As he reached out to God, he got greater revelation of God. That's why we keep saying that every challenge you face in your life is an opportunity to, to, re, to understand something about God you did not know before. And this is not head knowledge. You, when you understand something about God you didn't understand before, you see a manifestation of God you didn't have before. So the pressures of life become our opportunity for revelation and impartation. That's how David's psalms were penned out. All of them. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Make me lie down green pastor, we know that one. Psalm 27 verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. All of these things. Now this Psalm 18, the background of it was David who was a man with a promise of, his, of God on his life. He was anointed in the midst of his brethren to take over from Saul. But it was several years, about 13 years or so. It's almost like when the anointing touched David's head, he, is when the battle intensified. <laughs> not always, not always so, but most of the time, when you see, sometimes the battles of our life come as a result of our foolishness, our mistakes and things like that. But let me tell you, more, a lot of battles in your life come as a result of satanic challenge to your destiny. The proof of an, of an anointed life is not an easy life. The proof of an anointed life is when Satan rises up against you. But that, the, the reason for the anointing is to subdue things. The reason for the anointing is not for your face to be shining. The reason, actually, the anointing is invisible. Even when they pour oil on your head, it's an invisible point. It's a point of contact to an invisible blessing. The real blessing is that anointing, that invisible power. Sir, you're crafted for the battles of life. You're kitted for the battles of life. You're equipped for the battles of life. And in the name of Jesus, they shall not overcome you. You will come out of that financial challenge. God will give you the wisdom for it. He'll give you the opportunities you need. He'll give you the help you need. As long as your heart is open and you're ready to learn, God will keep giving you opportunity after opportunity. In God's economy, you can never squander your opportunities. Oh, glory. We better be careful when we're talking to children of God because children of God are connected to a supernatural economy. An inexhaustible economy. The most important thing I've told people about working with God is your heart. Once your heart can be right, your opportunities will be inexhaustible. So David, the background of this is David, a man with an anointing on his life, a promise of God on his life. That anointing came upon him and battle intensified. That anointing came upon him and the man who who he was supposed to succeed, was now looking, for, pursuing him in the wilderness, looking at, following him. He wanted his life. And Psalm 18 is one of those chapters that were penned out of David's, you know, frustrations and reaching out to God and agitations. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I'm a, I'm a person of faith. I, I like to believe I am, and I believe in the spirit of faith. But many people have gotten some things about faith wrong. Some people think the more faith you have, the less challenge you have. Faith tames challenges. <laughs> I'm not glorifying challenges. But do you, know, do you know that without Goliath, there can be no rewards? The rewards in your life are faced a, a, direct, a direct product of the problems you, 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 what? you tackle. No Goliath, no testimony. I'm not glorifying Goliath. But he's there whether we glorify him or not. 
So he said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. So he began to see this. You began to see this. The, the, see, the challenges of life should get you more in love with God. That's what we tell believers. God is not your ATM machine. Some people, the only time they know to pray is when they have challenge. No, 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 no. The, 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 what you get out of prayer is the relationship you have with God before you pray. So prayer is not just there for a quick fix from God. Prayer is there. The primary purpose of prayer is to develop a relationship with God. So David starts out saying, he says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. My goodness. Man, you will not know the value of the power of God that you have until the battles of life rise up against you and you see God sustaining you. So I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Look at verse 2. Hallelujah. The Lord is my rock. This is revelation. <laughs> Are you here, somebody? You know, it's a great, it seems like a contradiction, but um, the truth of the matter is that you will never know God's healing power until you're sick. Until sickness hits your body. You will never know his preserving power until the battles of life come against you. So all this David is talking out of revelation, experience, revelation, experience, born of revelation, or revelation, born of experience. The Lord is my rock. It became a revelation to him. Not Sunday school story. <laughs> the Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my deliverer. All of these statements, all of these names he's calling God, can, you can preach on each or one of them for one year and not finish. My rock, my hiding place, he's my fortress. It's like a cliff. You see a high mountain. Nobody in their right mind will go. When people are climbing Kilimanjaro, you know that there's something else driving them. They just have an ambition, explorer, conquest, for conquest. There is no economic importance of climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. What are you going to? What are, why are you? Why are you going to a, a graveyard, eighteen thousand feet, almost four kilometers underwater, to go and visit the wreckage of a ship that crashed and sank eighteen thousand, and over two thousand people died? Why are you going to look at that thing? Have some African sense. What are you going to looking for there? What's the economic importance of going to visit the Titanic? That's why money means road is not good. That's why God will equip you before he gives you some level of money. $250,000 per seat and you go and die there and you'll be cramped like sardines in that place. So what do they say now? That you die doing what? Or Daniel. Listen. Anyway. But when you go up to that tall cliff, anybody that goes up there, see, there's some place that you, can, you get to that even the enemy will give up on you. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You are there right now as a believer. If you just take your stand there, even Satan will give up on you. My deliverer, the one that moves me out of battle zone into safety. My God, my strength, Haya. in whom I trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. All this thing is not just him just talking. These are revelations. My God. <laughs> when David said, I will he, he, he will hide me from, in, in the cliff of the rock from the strife of men's tongues. He knows what he means. He knows what he's saying. When you're going through some things, people, instead of them praying for you, they'll be saying, look at that person. What, what sin have they committed? The strife of men's tongues can be, can be worse than people stoning you physically. But David is talking out of revelation. Who is God to you? Oh, dear Lord. Sir, my, you're coming out of that thing. And you keep coming out. I said, you keep coming out. But look at what David is talking. It all begins with relationship. I said, I will love thee, oh my God, for you are my strength. So he came to understand that God was not just a thing that you use. You develop a relationship with him. He's a real being. And the more you get to his heart, the more you see his hand. So focus on developing a relationship with God. Don't be this kind of person that after the next breakthrough, he can't see you in the place of prayer again. Some people, God, be wondering, should I step in now? 
Because I'm, I'm enjoying my son or my daughter's presence. So I just give them this breakthrough now. I won't, I won't go see them again. I hear somebody. Now please go to verse 31. Glory. I said glory. Say the Lord is my strength. Say the Lord is my strength. Say the Lord is my strength. Some of us wake up early in the morning when people are sleeping. Our body has adjusted to it now because we got to hear from God. <laughs> the thing with their head is mighty. Except you hear from God. You're like, a, you're like a man naked in the street. For who is God? Save the Lord. David is talking from Revelation. Who is a rock? Save our God. Wow. Verse 32. It is God that girdeth me with strength. This is the scripture that's been troubling me for one week. I woke up one morning. <laughs> around 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 2.30 or there. It was just worrying me. Worrying me. He didn't worry you. It's not the one you're thinking. Because Nigeria, if you're, if you're Nigeria, you know they worry you now. People, they sell, people that sell things for rat poison, eh? Not that one. I just woke up one. It, it, the thing has been worrying me. It is God that girded me with strength. Kalaboyaba. Sir, nothing they can come against you, but they'll not overcome you. That thing you're looking at, just, just hide in God and seek to understand him. Seek his wisdom, seek his knowledge. Let him infuse your life with strength. You are kitted for the battle. He said, it's God that girdeth me with strength. Yeah, this, looks, this is King James, I know. But that word girded, it means he surrounds me with strength. He, he, he encompasses me around with strength. He wears his strength around about me like a mantle. He makes my face harder than the circumstance. Satan is a liar. You're not going to be struggling all your life. Satan is a liar. You're not going to die with that disease in your body. Satan is a liar. You're moving to the next phase of your life. Your God strengthens you. Sometimes you can have situations in your life where the situation is painting a narrative. That person's not serious, or this happens, or that happens. Hey, life happens to all of us. Some of us, because of our mistakes, some because of just direct satanic attack. But don't never forget who is with you. Never forget. I love how Dr. Mike Murdoch says it. He said, God is the one that stays when men go. You call the Holy Spirit the one who stays with you. They can misunderstand you. They can malign you. Maybe you don't even understand yourself. But God understands you and God loves you. Just stay with him. You redefine your life. I say, stay with him all. I say, I will love you. I will love you, Lord, for you are my strength. It is God that girded me. It's like somebody who is weak, but he picks him up. Strengthens him. Validates him. And he makes my way perfect. Something is coming on you today. Oh. Something is coming on you today. Oh. Those crooked finances will straighten up. God will shine light. He will show you where the crack is. He will show you where you need to make an adjustment. He's for you. He's not against you. He girds me with strength. He puts a mantle around about me of strength. He, 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 he picks me up with his power. And then he makes my way perfect. Ayah. I don't care how many times you have failed, there's success in the future. I don't care how many times you've messed up, there's success in the future. Just press into the one that loves you. Let him correct you. Let him guide you. Let him train you. Just be trainable. Anybody that's trainable can be a success. Don't be too smart for yourself. It is God that got it. This strength is diverse. Wisdom is strength. Proverbs 24 tells us that. A man of wisdom knowledge increases strength. Proverbs 24 verse 3. By wisdom a house is built. By understanding is established. With, with knowledge every part of that house is filled with all manner of precious food and treasure. A wise man is strong. Yeah, a man of knowledge increases strength. In the multitude of counselors there is safety. It is God that guided me with strength and maketh my way perfect. Verse 33. Yeah, look at this now. He makes my feet like the feet of an antelope. Antelopes, their power is in their hind legs. That's why they call them hinds, hind leg. The ability to push forward and leap forward is God that gives it. 
You can never be too down for God to pull you off. He maketh my feet like hinds feet, and then he sets me upon my high places. Listen, the word of the Lord came to me today. And don't take it lightly. Today is a turnaround day for somebody. Today is a turnaround day for somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to, but today is a turnaround day for somebody. God's light is shining on your finances. God's light is shining on your life. God's life is shining on your body. In life, it seems like you're carrying life like a dead body. God will detach you from that weight today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And life will start carrying you now. We carry life like a dead body. Life has been grueling, but the God's light is shining upon somebody today. I speak this by the word of the Lord. The Lord is your strength. As I'm talking, he's entering you. I say he's entering you. He's giving your, making your feet like hinds feet. The ability to outrun the things that have been pursuing and catching you that are not desirable. God gives that strength. You outrun that narrative. That picture, false picture that God has, that men have cast you in. Huh? You'll outrun it. I don't care who got there first to tell lies about you. Or even what they're saying is true. But the truth of the matter, the moment a child of God said, God, I'm sorry, that's cancelled. So their lies will not stop you entering your next phase. I plead the blood of Jesus against any refuge of lies speaking against you. Where, 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 where? Where favor should have been speaking for you, lies have been speaking, well, it's exchanged in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He makes my feet like hinds feet and sets me upon my high places. No mistake will define your life. If you have a heart to repent and to listen to God and be trained by God, he makes my feet like hinds feet. And can I say this? Whilst the anointing is hot, it shall never be said of you that it was too late. I declare that you are on time. I say that you're on time. I say that you're on time. No matter your age, your stage, your phase of life, your experience, I say that you are on time. I say that you're on time. I say that you're on time. It shall never be said of you, it's too late. It shall never be said of you that when you came, your turn had passed. Oh, he said, my, your times are in his hand. That any day you show up, it will be your turn. Any day you show up, it will be your time. It will never be said of you, it was too late. This strength causes men to be on time. He maketh my feet like hinds feet, and he sets me upon my high place. I'm not just sharing scripture tonight. As I'm sharing, this scripture is framing your world. It's defining the next season of your life. He maketh my feet like hinds feet. He setteth me upon my high place. You see, it's present continuous. It's high place to high place. It's promotion to promotion. Whatever looked like it worked, worked against you, this anointing is resting upon it. It will start working for you. It will start working for you. I say it will start working for you. He makes my feet like the feet of an, of a, of an antelope. A deer. The, the push, the, the strength is in the hind legs. The hind legs are behind. So the thing that will give you speed in life will be hidden to the enemy. <laughs> they say you're coming from behind, but your power is behind. So in that place where men think you are behind, when this anointing hits you, you just show up like a wonder. They make my feet like hinds feet. Do I have anybody that believes in God's grace here tonight? You're going forward, though. You're going forward, though. That place you are in cannot hold you again, though. You will see what will begin to. I say you will see. I say you will see what will begin to happen to you. They say you're behind. They say you're behind. You better. You better know who the God you serve. Oh. It is in that hind place that your power is. As long as you don't stop laying hold on God, you can never be behind. The God that collapses years is your God. And the God that shrinks years is your God. The God that collapses time is your God. Let nobody talk you out of believing that kind of a God. He maketh, present continuous, my feet like the feet of a deer whose power is in his hind legs. The power to push forward and setteth me upon my high place. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? Please sit. Let's go to verse 39. Say the Lord is my strength. The Lord, is my the Lord told me tonight two words. He said, number one, revelation. Number two, impartation. It's coming upon you. 
I don't need to, to talk too long. It's coming upon you. As these revelations unveil to your spirit, as you receive it from your spirit, strength comes. Strength comes. Strength means so many things. It's an inexhaustible syllabus. God's word is inexhaustible. So we'll just say the parts that we need to say today. Strength comes to, to people's lives. Strength comes to people's destinies and they begin to recover time. Strength comes to people's destiny and one event collapses 20 years. One event like this. Say the Lord is my strength. Say he makes my feet. Like the feet of a deer. Say he sets me upon my high places. So that strength is coming upon you today. I say it's coming upon you today. Your God is wrapping you with his strength today. Who fears the battle when God is there with you? But this, I will not be afraid of the, of the multitudes that come against me. For you are my glory and the lifter of my head. Thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. You have subdued under me those that rose up against me. Verse 40. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. You have also given me the neck of my enemies. Please, don't be like a typical African. Don't think of human beings. No, any human being is only as great as the spirit inspiring them. So, them and their great, 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 great granddaddy, Satan, are all defeated. So, forget men. They're only as great as the spirits that inspire them. So, you d keep dealing with the spirit. It's under your feet and eventually the human, human factor will sort itself out. You have given me the neck of my enemies. May I see it all? God has given me the neck of poverty. I hold it like this. He can't follow me on my lineage. And by giving me the neck, not only has he died so I can be wealthy, but he has given me spiritual techniques. He has taught, shown me the mystery of the tithe, the mystery of the prophetic offering, the mystery of sowing seed and standing in faith and breaking the devil's power over it. The neck. You know when they hold the neck, he's gone. I saw in one video, I said, Kai, nature is amazing. Oh. <laughs> when you see a cat, a jaguar, or a leopard looking into a river and diving into a river. I said, what are you looking for in a river? A leopard hunting a crocodile in the crocodile's terrain. Have you seen that video? Leopard got so hungry, so he forgot all the thing on his own terrain. He was now looking in the water. Leopard looking into water. Crocodile, that's his terrain. Then he just dived in. You didn't see it. After a while, he just came out. And he got the neck of the crocodile. He got the neck. I saw another one. A jaguar was drinking water at a water hole. And I thought it was going to be the same story. But this time, the crocodile came out and got the jaguar's neck. So when they get your neck, you're gone. As mighty as a cobra is, get the neck. Just get the neck. As mighty as a python is, get the neck. Just get the neck. So he said he has given you the neck of your enemies. The neck of disease. You know about Yalam Oyana? You know how Jesus got the neck of disease? He took your sickness. And the good gospel news is that he didn't just take your sickness, he took your poverty. That's the good gospel news. So he, 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 he took it, he, he killed it in his sacrifice on the cross. Then he gives you his wisdom, his word, to show you how to manifest it in your life. You have given me also the neck of my enemies, them that destroy them that hate me. So honestly speaking, I don't, I'm not trying to criticize anybody, but it should, it should not be the believer's curriculum to spend precious time praying against them that hate you. It's not our curriculum, sir. It's not New Testament curriculum. New Testament curriculum is finding out the authority we have and putting our foot on the neck. Not spending hours praying for people to die. Hours praying against enemies. No revelation. I don't care how many results you get. You can get results from Old Testament. You can get results from New. You have also given me the neck of my enemies that might destroy them that hate me. That's why we sit down with God's word. That's why we develop a love relationship with Christ because the one who loves you will reveal their secrets to you. You know that? I say, you know that? 
When you fall in love with people, their hearts starts coming out to you. It's called heart to heart. Then he will start telling you how to work this thing and make it work. You have also given me the neck of my enemies that I might destroy. I destroy them that hate me. Glory to God. Are you here tonight? I saw you here tonight. Glory. I said glory. glory. Now I want you to see this. Very important revelation we must learn. You, so many people get so technical with God. You know, the learning God's word and the principles of God's word are so important. But you must understand that it's the power of God that causes the principles to work. Look at David. His revelation made him a talker. Oh, hallelujah. Some people are not talking enough. Or let me say it this way. They're talking, but they're not talking the right thing enough. Look at David's revelation. The Lord is, the Lord is, the Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my deliverer. The Lord is the one that subdues people under me. He was talking it. Make no mistake. There is something about words and dominion. You know, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen, faith cometh by, faith in the devil comes by hearing the words of the devil. It's not big revelation. You can't be at your home and say, eh, pastor, okay, eh, make we just tell the truth now. What is truth? Look, 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 look. Pilate, but Jesus, uh, Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Truth is reality. He didn't know that it was truth standing in front of him. Truth is reality. Truth is reality. You may not have two pennies to rob right now, but the truth is you are blessed. You've got to hold that truth if you want to break out of this sense realm. So David kept saying it, kept saying it. The Lord is my high tower. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is the one that subdues my enemies under me. So you could see David's secret why he always went into battle and came out intact. Because he sent words ahead of him. He said, I will not trust in those weapons of war. He used them, but he didn't trust in them. So he kept sending words. He kept sending words. He kept sending words. Words that were based on his covenant with God. He kept sending words. Lord, you're my refuge. Lord, you're my fortress. Oh, I love it. In Genesis 15, verse 1, when the Bible said concerning Abraham, that he looked around about him, and he said, I don't have any physical seed. He said, only this Eliezer, not Kanu, but this Eliezer. Is he the one that's going to, is he the one that's going to inherit after me? Hear this and never forget. God says what he means and he means what he says. I said God says what he means and he means what he says. He talked about a physical seed and a spiritual seed. The physical seed that was supposed to come out of Abraham was what was the, was the nation of Israel. And through that nation of Israel, Christ was to, was to come. And Christ is now the spiritual seed. But it's important for the physical seed to come. Are you here somebody? And God told him in Genesis 15, 1, fear not Abraham. I am your shield. Kai. It's one of my favorite scriptures. I am your shield. <laughs> I am your magen mag megina. I am the strong scaly hide of a crocodile. That's why I was shocked when I saw that cheetah hunting a crocodile. Because he knows his size. It's not a, he, got a very, he got a very young, young crocodile. He got a young crocodile. And he knows a crocodile to hunt. There's some crocodile you don't hunt. Because as they grow in mass, like this, you come into their domain, you answer your father's name. So the Lord is my shield. I know the Lord is telling me, you know, most of my children, they just, they just, they box in the revelation. They don't know that every time I declare these kind of words, I mean everything. Do you know that God is your financial shield? Do you know what shield is? Armor. You want people to wear armor? <laughs> Rebel Pari was telling me a story about some people. And they were complaining, saying that some people they knew in Nigeria, that when they, they knew them before they came into power, they were very nice and generous. But when they came into power, it's like they were not responding to them again. And the people that are talking about obviously do know Jesus. 
Because when they came into power, now they felt that they needed armor. You know, there's something called armor. Uh, armor. So they went to their funny guys somewhere and they gave them armor. So those guys wear armor. <laughs> so part of the armor, the requirements of the armor is not to be too generous to maintain the armor. See, serving the devil is nonsense. Oh. Nonsense. He will use you, kill you, and laugh at you. Yeah. That's the devil. Tender mercies of the wicked devil. Cruelty. But you know the Christian has armor. Hey, hey. That blessing is an armor. You know what an armor is? It's a shield. Impenetrable armor. The chant of a witch doctor can't break through this armor. It's a blood armor. A kayataya. That's why he said, I will not fear, for 10,000 of people come against me. He said, though they come against me, they'll stumble and fall. David knew he had armor on him. You better know you have armor. It's knowledge that activates it. Philemon verse 6, that the acknowledgement of your faith, the, the, the working of your faith, the working of your faith may become divinely active and energized as you acknowledge every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So Paul was telling us how David succeeded when he understood this revelation of God. He said it, the Lord is my shield. When you say that, these words go out into the realm of the spirit. Power past power. Which doctor is working for his father, Satan? When you release those words, El Shaddai, come. Which doctor and his papa go run? The Lord is my shield. Say with me, the Lord is my shield. Say the Lord is my financial shield. Eh, weaponized prosperity. Weaponized, soaked in blood. I've sown my seed. You say, where's your harvest? Where are your words? Those words are canceling your harvest. Don't say, where's my harvest? Say, my harvest is here. Weaponize prosperity. Prosperity in blood. You wear armor. I say this with all responsibility. The believer is the real babalao. Those ones are fake. That's why believers ask now. No babalao does not speak words now. Ah, they speak words. When they're playing with those cowrie shells. I got them in them. Hey, hey. Ah! Oh, no. hey, okay, let's see. Let's see. Baba, is there no way? Hey, every it seems like there's no way. Okay, bring another cow. Hey, it's like I'm seeing a way here. Liar. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. Why go looking for a way where you have Jesus Christ? You better believe what you have. You better believe what you have. You are the real juju man. When you pray, what do you think pray in other tongues is? My money has come in the name of Jesus Christ. You are chanting, you are the real juju man. Original one. That's the mistake some of these missionaries did. Thank God they brought us, they brought us Jesus. Then they brought us hospital, school. Nothing wrong with that. But they took away the knowledge of blood covenant. They should, because they did, you can't give what you don't have. They didn't understand that this blood covenant was just simply perverted. But this is the strength of Christianity. The devil took it and perverted it. So they took away, they gave us tie and suit. They took away our sense of the spirit. They took away our knowledge of blood. What they should have done was to adjust it and say, the devil stole it from us. But they didn't know it themselves. But we're recovering it. I said we're recovering it. I said we're recovering it. I said we're recovering it. You, how do you think? When David charged at Goliath, he charged at him with words. The war of the gods is war of words now. Prophecy, the spirit of prophecy will say, you will never be rich. Are you not tidy and giving? You will never come out of this. You say, you're too late, devil. How can I not get what I already have? Eh, you'll get that next week. How can I not become what I already am? I'm a blessed man. I'm marked in blood. So it was words that were David's secret. I, the Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my deliverer. And as he was saying it, now look at Psalm 18. Let's go back to Psalm 18. As he was saying it, it was happening. My God. Then I came to understand how he defeated the lion and the bear. It's not normal. Though. One South African preacher came and preached here one time. So uh, we're just talking with him, with the people that brought him. And he was saying that a lot of these pictures that we see, not pic yeah, pictures and videos and things that we see, 
about wildlife are not real. He said, when you see a real full-grown lion, a real full-grown lion, real male full-grown lion, can from his, as he's standing from his paws there to his mane, to his head, he can be six feet. Yeah, six feet. So the ones who are seeing, I don't know what's happening to them. Forget about the one that they ate in just wildlife park. That, that's one chance lion. Are you here, somebody? I said, you here, somebody? Psalm 18, verse 1. I don't know why I said, I, I remember, I remember. Let's go back to Psalm 18, verse 3. 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be. Save means, save is, the, the word save here in Hebrew is the word Yasha, the root word of Yeshua, Savior, Jesus. Hebrew word for Jesus. It means to be brought into a wide and open space. So that's what happens. When you call him his covenant name, he brings you into that wide and open. So that's why when Abraham said, God said, Abraham, don't be afraid of him. I'm your shield. I'm, I'm the strong, scaly hide of a crocodile around about you. I am your defense. I'm your fortress. And then he said, I'm your exceeding great reward. The literal means I'm the one, I'm your quickly and rapidly increasing money supply. You must say it all. You must say it all. Not once, not twice, not thrice. It must be a chant. God, you are my quickly increasing money supply. God, you are my quickly, rapidly increasing money supply. I'm a tither, I'm a giver, I serve the Lord with gladness. And I speak these words. You are my quickly, rapidly increasing money supply. Just keep saying it. I said, just keep saying it. <laughs> One day, David Yonggi Cho, blessed memory, many, many years ago in his early part of his ministry, when he now, God used him to now start prayer mountain, where they just have these prayer cabins. You go to that prayer mountain, there are hundreds of them dug into the mountain. And if you go to that place, it's built in a way that you can't stand up. There's a mat there. You're forced to kneel down. Because they, they don't believe in light. They believe in kneeling down. So when you enter that place, you're forced to kneel down. So one lady came and she had cancer. He tried to talk to her, tried to talk to her. The revelation wasn't getting in. So he said, okay, just, just do what I'm saying. Can you come down and do what I'm saying? Go and check into prayer mountain. Fasting and praying. You can have your small water with you. Then he said, he gave her scriptures. Jesus. Jesus Christ himself took my infirmity, bare my sickness, my disease. Gave her like three of them. And he said, each one, write it down in a notebook 10,000 times. He said, as you write it, think on it. Then two, write it, think on it. Two, write it, think on it. Before she got to one, two thousand, she looked for the cancer. She didn't find it. She looked for the pain first. She didn't find it. So she finished. When she finished, she went out. Cancer had gone. Because she took time to get the word inside of her. Some people do touch and go with God's word. That's why. So this, you want to know God as your quickly increasing money supply? It must become a chant. Day and night. The day it enters, one day in your dreams, you'll just be seeing billions. That thing will climb you. That's how the spirit of prosperity climbs you. Not the one that you'll be prophesying nonsense. Like, don't fear their fear. So what? If they make it a thousand naira per liter, your life will keep going forward. God is your constantly increasing money supply. You mind your covenant practice, mind your tithing, mind your giving, mind your confession of faith. Hallelujah. That's why nobody will talk me out of a supernatural life. You're too late, sir. So I will call upon the Lord. Now we know, how did he call upon the Lord? He shows us in verse 2. He called him, you are my fortress. That's calling upon him. No, eh, just with job, job, ah, become, become, no, become, no, 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 no. Hey, hey, what you like? Tell me, you no. You call him his covenant name. You're my healer. You're the healer of this body. Sickness can't stay here. Say it until it enters your spirit. You say, Pastor, how long? As long as it takes. Because many of us are fighting thoughts. You're fighting old programming. You're fighting something that brought you up to say that is praying in tongues, is drinking blood. Or that you never know, you know, uh, it's like healing is one chance. You know, sometimes God will keep you alive, sometimes for his sovereign purpose, he will let you die. See, so when you have those kind of things inside of you, no, you just take the word of God, like Americans say, cold turkey. 
just say what God is saying over and over and over. Some of you, you dance to too many scriptures. You don't need too many. Especially when you're fighting battles. You don't need... Who are you trying to impress? You're my quickly increasing money supply. So I told you for one week, this has been troubling me. So I couldn't get away from it. So I knew it was the word of the Lord for this. I would have preached something else, but I knew this was the word of the Lord. Say the Lord is my strength. He girds me with strength. So you see, he's your financial strength. He's your, he's your preservation strength. The one that preserves your life from destruction. Redeems your life. How do you get him to work? You call him his covenant name. You open your mouth and hear yourself saying it. Not thinking. Say it. Train yourself to speak those words. When you're alone by yourself. Not when you have your neighbor to impress. So when you're in church sometimes you want to impress your neighbor. Everybody can dance a good dance and impress the neighbor. But we know when you're alone, nobody to impress but God. Then we even know how real God is to you. Because when you're there, all you can do is lift up your hand. I hear somebody say, God is my strength. Say, Lord, you're my financial strength. Say, you're my financial fortress. Say, you're my financial defense. Say, you're my health strength. You're my health fortress. You're my health defense. Are you here, somebody? Oh, praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. I say, praise God. That's why David was light years ahead of the average Israelite. His declaration of faith. The Lord is my light and my salvation. How would the revelation not be flowing in his life? Look at this Bible. We know they understand that more. Hey, hey God, don't bless them, Pastor Isaac, or Pastor Dunka, or this one, or Bishop Edepo. No, no, no. You have the Holy Ghost in you. I hear somebody. I saw you hear somebody. Say, God talks to me. And I know his voice. Say, I'm a sheep of his pasture. Say, as I study and meditate and read the scriptures, say, I understand them. Say, I know they understand this preaching. Say, I understand it. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. Look at these potent bullets. Ah! These are the bullets coming out of his mouth. And as he's saying it, the revelation is entering him and what? In igniting faith. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. So today, as we're preparing for communion, you'll be, that little time when they're sharing, with you'll be talking, oh. Because that's the benefit of communion to you. You'll be talking what Christ is to you. Are you here, somebody? I said, are you here, somebody? Praise God. So words are very important in activating this revelation. You see, this strength is, 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 not, is not only limited to physical strength, but it's important, physical strength. Are you here, somebody? I'm not canceling out doing other things you need to do. I'm not canceling out eating right. I'm not canceling out exercise. I'm not canceling out all of those things. But first, understand where the source of your power is. The Lord is my strength. Every time before I go out to exercise, I, I, I claim Psalm 71 verse 16. I say, Lord, I go out to exercise now. I go out to exercise in your strength. Because the Bible says, I go in your strength. These scriptures must become real to you. Just, just sit down and be handling scripture like you're in Sunday school. That's why we don't call BCC Sunday school. It's a training course. I hear somebody. Is that when you're calling offering, collection? It's a collection. You know, they collect collection. You must hear the sound of the coin falling. That's collection. Quang, ling, ling. So we grow up to understand that's what you give God. But the heavy money, you use it to buy your car. But when you go to church, I know you didn't grow up like that. Some of you who are privileged to grow up in Christian homes. That's why I want to retrain people now. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Yeah. I say hallelujah. Yeah. I say hallelujah. Yeah. Let the generations come here and know that it's the big money you give God, man. Not the one you distribute when you land from Kekena, people you land from boss, or even after your car, then you just look at the sweet change. 
When you send your children, okay, when you go to um, when you go to shop there and you buy puff puff, let them give you change and then give offering. You're training them that that's what you give God. That's why generations will keep being poor. You give God the fat stuff, man. So that fat harvest will come to you. Are you here, somebody? Then give me a shout. 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 Glory. Say the Lord is my financial strength. The Lord is my health strength. The Lord is my success strength. Say the Lord is my high tower. Say the Lord is my impenetrable armor. Say the Lord is my mighty warrior. Say the Lord is my quickly, rapidly increasing money supply. Say the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Give the Lord a shout. So David used words. Words were around the umbrella. David used words. Words were the key. Words are the key of the covenant. The acknowledgement of every good thing in you is key to seeing God's power. You must talk. No matter. Some people say, you know, I'm just a quiet type. And then speak quiet words. But open your mouth. They're the shy type. They speak shy words. When you see how much is working for you, you'll be delivered of shyness. Hallelujah. That's hallelujah. <laughs> you pastor, you know, you know my problem. With, you know, I, I, I like your church, and you know, I just like you. You know, I just what I can't understand is why why you people are so noisy. <laughs> uh, what I understand that you, you have never been attacked by the devil. Yeah. When the devil attacks you, you will be noisy, honey. You you'll get noisy. Mm, you'll get noisy. <laughs> Devil, leave me alone, devil. Devil say, ah, demons come from everywhere. We get meat here. We have meat here. Say, Satan, no. Nobody's dying in this house today. Okay. Eh? You have to have a conversation with poverty. Let the walls of your house or your habitation know that poverty is not allowed here. Are you somebody? Broke people don't live in this house. You don't shout at the devil. The devil advises demons say, this one is crazy. Let's go to let's go to the house of people that have a normal small. So you have to speak words. Say speak words. Say to activate this covenant, to activate God's strength. Say you must speak words. Say words are key to receiving. Say words are key to receiving. Now let me say this: this to enjoy any of these things that belong to us and this strength of God. And any other thing God has given to us, there are two vital things you must understand. One, you must understand that you must learn to receive it. And number two, you must learn to resist the devil. Receiving from God is saying yes to him. Resisting the devil is saying no to the devil. So you must keep learning to say yes to God with your words. And you must keep saying, learning to say no to the devil with your words. Saying yes to God is receiving from him. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 16, of his fullness have we received and what? Love gift, grace upon uh, grace. So words are key to receiving. Words are key. What you're saying. Are you somebody? You believe that God has guided you with his strength, you must say it. Are you somebody? You believe he's your financial strength, you believe he's your healer, you believe he's your defender, you must say it. God, I thank you because you have, you have, you have armed me with strength. You have kitted me for the battle. I cannot be defeated. I thank you because you're on my side. Glory to God. You're not against me. You must learn to speak words. I hear somebody. That's how to receive from God. Then to the devil, you resist him. Bible says, submit yourself to God. Then resist the devil and he will flee from you. Um, James chapter 4 verse 7. Submit to God. He's agreeing with what he said about you. I hear somebody. Then resist the devil. Use the name of Jesus to break his power in any area of your life. You stand in the name of Jesus. No, 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 no. You can't do this here. No, you can't do this here. I hear somebody. Oh, glory to God. I said glory to God. There is a turnaround for somebody today. I said there is a turnaround for somebody today. I said there is a turnaround for somebody today. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. I'm going to tell you something the Lord told me. Are you ready for it? Whatever you need from God, believe that you receive. Yeah. Somebody say, Pastor, why, why, Pastor, you're not so deep. You don't, I, don't, I don't need you to be more deep than this. Oh. Lift up your hand to heaven. Say in the name of Jesus Christ, today on the altar of communion, I believe I receive 
Now, I don't know if I talk for you, I may talk too small or talk too big. What do you believe that you receive? Jump to your feet. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ, on communion table today, I believe I receive. Now, what do you need, want, or desire? Begin to say it, because I can't talk for you. I don't know what's in your heart. Say, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, on the altar of communion today, by Jesus' broken body, by his shed blood, by his life given for my life, say, I believe I receive. Now, say what you believe you receive. Say it, say it, Just say it. I believe I receive. I believe I receive. That's the second thing the Lord has been worrying me about. He said, simply receive it as done. Just receive it as done. He said, my people are just going around the prayer mountain every day asking, asking, asking. I've already heard. Just stop that asking business. Stand your ground and start receiving it as done. I believe I receive my harvest, my mega harvest. I believe I receive strength. I believe I receive the favor of God. I believe I receive direction for the next way forward. I believe I receive understanding of the next way forward. Uh, next, um, the, next, uh, the, next way, the, way, the next steps to go forward. I believe I receive. My eyes are open to see. My ears are open to hear. My heart is open to understand. I believe I receive strength in my body in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe the power of God is quickening my body, ridding my body of sickness and disease. I believe. Oh, my, my, my. You want a transaction with God's power? I believe I receive. Those four words are some of the most powerful words you could ever and, and you could ever engage to activate God's power. What is it that you need? When you come to his provision table, believe that you receive. The Lord kept telling me, receive it as done. Receive it as done. So I received the money. I received the favor. I received the know-how. I received the favor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The loins of kings are loosened on my behalf. Oh, the strength of nations is mine. The heart of kings are opening to me. I receive. The refuge of lies, the false narrative around my life is being punctured, injured, and removed by the blood of Christ. I believe I receive that armor. That armor, that spiritual armor. Oh, my quota bayakata. I go into life as a champion, as a conqueror, knowing, knowing whose I am. Knowing who is for me. I believe it. I believe it. It's no use, use memorizing 10,000 scriptures when you don't believe half a scripture. Half a scripture that you believe is more than 10,000 that you quote I don't believe. I believe I receive. The Lord told me, today is a turnaround day for somebody. It's a turnaround day for somebody. The Lord has girded me with strength. He has armed me with strength. So I see an armor. It's already on you, but I see an armor activating, waking up in your life. It's an armor. It's a shield. It's a defense. Are you here, somebody? Yeah, there's armor. There's armor against Laco. There's armor. There's armor. There's armor against sickness and disease. There's armor against the determinate counsel of the evil one. There's armor. There's an armor. Armor is a shield. Armor it wraps itself around about you. The strength of God. Arm you today. You're, you're leaving this service armed and dangerous. And then with your mouth, you release words. Words are your bullets. Don't let your theology get deeper than that. Don't be speaking so much Greek and Hebrew when you're not doing this one. I believe I receive. That's what activates that power. Oh, Mahoka Yamaha. The acknowledgement of our faith. The, the, the communication of our faith. Our faith becomes effective as we acknowledge. It becomes divinely energized. Energized and infused with the power of God as we, as we believe every good thing spoken about us. So today, armor is coming upon you. That's what I see in my spirit. Oh, I, see, I see people wearing armor. You see soldiers, but sometimes our soldiers, you see how they, they wear armor, they wear it on their knee, they wear bulletproof vests, they wear their hell. I see armor wrapping people around. The Lord told me there's armor against lack. There's armor. I'm not doing away with any other thing in the natural. I'm not doing away with it. But you see, you, there's some things you tackle from the spirit realm. There's armor. There's armor. Makarabo <laughs> satire. Whether you like it or not, there's a spiritual aspect to life. Very important. I hear somebody. Satan and the occult, they use words. But we stand in blood and we speak words. Communion is of no use if you take it and you don't speak words. It's those words that activate your armor. Somebody's leaving this place today. Armed and dangerous. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the things you seek will start seeking you. The things you lack will start finding you. Your eyes are open to see. Your ears are open to hear. Your heart is open to understand. God is doing spiritual surgery on your heart. 
The things God has put around you for your peace, you're understanding it now. You're submitting yourself to what you need to submit yourself to. There's an armor coming upon you. The Lord is my high tower. The Lord is my fortress. The Lord is my impenetrable and impregnable defense. I shall never be ashamed. Glory to God. Are you talking somebody? I know some of you who have masks on. Thank you. You can talk slightly under the masks. Lord, you're my quickly and rapidly increasing money supply. Some of you, your eyes are seeing your harvest. Your hands have been put upon your harvest. Your feet are, mo are moving into harvest zone. Harvest zone. Harvest zone. The Lord told me tonight is a revelation. A spiritual, a spiritual understanding. And then it will now produce an impartation. Is strength. Strength is coming upon you tonight. Strength for productive production, productivity is coming upon you tonight. Are you here, somebody? I say, are you here, somebody? Glory to God. <laughs> they have said you are, you are behind. Ah, you understand the mystery of behind now. The power is in the hind legs. In that place, as you lay hold on this revelation and keep speaking these words, the power will hit you there. And from that place, they say you are behind. They will see you. <laughs> Shooting out. Glory to God. Father, thank you because this communion table is blessed tonight. We've tried to do what you asked us to do. I, I trust that you take these words spoken. Make them really in hearts tonight. As your people partake of this blessed table, this covenant meal, let the word of the Lord fall upon them. Be activated upon them. It is the Lord that has girded me with strength and he has made my way perfect. Today in the name of Jesus Christ, every crooked path is made straight. Every rough road is made smooth. You will see, you will understand and you will know how to move forward. Light will come to your heart. Instruction will come to you. Some of you tonight as you sleep, the Lord will hide instruction in your heart. You wake up tomorrow, it will be unveiled to you. You start seeing things differently. You start understanding things differently. Strength has come. Wisdom is strength. Health is strength. Soundness is strength. Resourcefulness is strength. Whatever area of strength you need is administered to you tonight. I say it's administered to you tonight. I say it's administered to you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And this, this engagement, this contact will make a difference in your life. I say to make a difference in your life. I say to make a difference in your life. I say to make a difference in your life. I say to make a difference in your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What is the picture you see? Speak it. It's yours. Declare that it's yours. Declare the Lord has, has put you in that position. Are you here, somebody? Put you in that place. Speak words. Speak words. Then at the, at the right time when everybody is served, we'll eat and drink together. See the strength of God coming upon the work of your hands. The strength of God coming upon your family, your destiny, your health, your mind. Your mind for soundness and clarity of mind. I see, I see the strength of God coming upon the battles of your life. God taming the battles of your life. You know the Bible said that he quietens the raging sea. He breaks the bow asunder and the, and the spearman too. He causes wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. These are all manifestations of God's strength. Are you here somebody? Glory to God. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. You pray in other tongues and you speak words over your life. Intelligent words over your life. Yeah, sing whatever is in your heart. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is my strength. Yes, he's my strength. He girds me with strength tonight. He arms me with strength. He wraps me with his strength like a garment in the name of Jesus. He picks me up, lifts up my head. The battles of life makes me more than a conqueror, as he has said. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. He's my light. He's my salvation. He's my provision.
successfully be against me. Thank you because I leap forward. I push forward and I break out in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. You lift my head up above the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Speak words, speak words, speak words over your life. Speak words over your life. The Lord is your strength. He's your health. He's your financial resource. He's your favor. He's the shield run about your life. He's your defense. He's your mighty warrior. He's your impregnable armor in the name of Jesus. He's your financial wisdom. He's your financial resource. He's your opportunity. He's your favor. He's your guide. He's your guidance system. He's the one that opens your eyes to see where to go, how to do it. He's the one that leads you into the path of your harvest. He's the mighty warrior that goes ahead of you to make every crooked path straight, every rough road smooth. He is your mighty warrior. Months, 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 we, lo we lose light, we lose wisdom, we lose revelation, we lose it in the name of Jesus. Satan cease, desist from your evil maneuvers. Take your hands over my harvest, take your hands over the harvest that belongs to this church in the name of Jesus Christ. We break your power in the name of Jesus. Angels of God, go, go, cause the harvest to come, 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 cause the harvest to come. Lord, you're my strength in spirit, you're my strength in mind, you're my strength in body, you're my financial strength, you're my strength productivity in life, in ministry, you're the ability to fulfill vision, you're the ability to fulfill vision, you're the ability to fulfill vision, you're my ability to come into vision, you're my ability to manifest vision, you're my ability to come into the things you've ordained for me. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we worship you, we count it as done, 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 it's done, it's done. We have the lands, we have the buildings, we have the houses, we have the revival, we have the multitudes, the disciples, the multiplication of disciples, we have it, we have it. Now billions are like millions, now millions are like thousands. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, now, in the name of Jesus, thank you for millions of dollars, thank you for billions of naira, we have it! Thank you because our story has changed, our story has changed, our story has changed. There's a turnaround tonight, there's a turnaround tonight, there's a turnaround tonight. By the blood of Jesus, by your broken body, by your shed blood, by your life, coming, giving, giving for our life. There's a turnaround tonight, there's a turnaround tonight, there's a turnaround tonight, there's a turnaround tonight. There's a turn around tonight. There's a turn around tonight. There's a turn around tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I hear in my heart, the months ahead are blessed months. The months ahead, months ahead, are glorious months. I hear the Holy Ghost say, I've stretched forth my hand into the rest of the months of this year. Changing things, rearranging things. The months ahead are glorious months for you. The months ahead are blessed months for you. You take hold of God's strength by the words of your mouth. Releasing your faith through the words of your mouth. The months ahead are blessed months for you. Many of you are going to so increase in understanding. Understanding how to navigate the present season of your life. Many of you, your, 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 your spiritual heart, your heart, your spirit will be, will be open to see and understand what you need to do. Sometimes it's just little adjustments that swing open big doors. Understanding is multiplied to you in Jesus' name. The months ahead are blessed months. Just thank you for what you believe you have received tonight. Psalm he said, I'll bless you, Lord, because you have done it. I'll praise you, Lord. Psalm 52 verse 9. I'll praise you, Lord, because you have done it. I'll expect of you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We count it done tonight. 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 We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. You have guarded us with strength. We thank you for the battle. By the Lord, my God, I leap over the wall. By the Lord, my God, I run through the troop. By the Lord, my God, I scale impossible heights. We count it done tonight. We thank you because it's done. It is done, Lord. It is done. You guard us with strength in the name of Jesus. We thank you because it is done. We thank you for health. We thank you for light. We thank you for resourcefulness. We thank you for abundance. We thank you. We thank you for the way forward. We thank you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We magnify your name. I beg you, as you leave service tonight, I hope you know you don't ever leave the presence of God. You carry God in you. Don't stop speaking. I said, don't st stop speaking. Your God is confirming the words you speak. Father, thank you. Lift up your hands to heaven. Go and be blessed in Jesus' name. Go and prosper in the name of Jesus. Let this armor of strength work for you in the name of Jesus. Let this armor of strength open new doors for you in the name of Jesus. Let this armor of strength open new opportunities for you in the name of Jesus. Let this armor of strength give you dominion over every adversary in the name of Jesus. Let answers come to your questions in the name of Jesus. Let light, help and direction come to you in the name of Jesus. You are preserved, you are blessed and your hand is upon your harvest in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper, go and succeed, go and do well in Jesus' name. Clap your hands, oh ye people. Shout out to God with a voice of triumph.